welcome to the 18th annual Tallgrass Film Festival. A uh, big thank you to all of our sponsors uh, for being with us on this journey. And don't forget to tag us on your social media using at Tallgrass Film and hashtag Tallgrass 2020. I'm Ellie Kepi, and I'm part of the hospitality team and a pre-screener uh, here for the festival. And I'd like to welcome actor, writer, and executive producer, Ken Drachman. Ken was a film and TV major in high school in Israel and is a graduate of the American Musical and Dramatic Academy in New York City, where she was also a music theater major. She helped found the Israeli Music Theater Company. Her first film, The Book of Ruth, which is awesome. I've watched it a couple times already. Uh, stars Tony and Emmy Award nominee Tova Felchu. Ken wrote, executive produced, and starred in the movie. Ken, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Ellie. It's oh. great to be here. <laughs> Yay. Um, yay. <laughs> yay, I know. This is uh, uh, the festival. Um, we're running it a little longer because it's virtual this year and there mm -hmm. are, oh gosh, I think we're approaching 200 films in it. So congratulations um, for, yeah. for making the cut. Um, we have a lot of uh, folks who are, I know are with us right now uh, who want to hear about your movie. So let's get right into it. Um, thank you for telling the stories of this family. There's so many of them sort of interwoven in here, lots of layers. Where did the idea uh, for this film originate? So uh, about five years ago, 2015, I remember it was really close to April, which was very convenient because that it, it did really happen around Passover. Um, the Anne Frank House in Amsterdam released a study, a new study, and, and people don't uh, necessarily realize that, but they keep working all these years. They keep releasing studies every now and then, um, you know, be it parts of the diary that were never published before, or also so, sort of stuff that they found out through research. So that specific study talked about the fact that she actually, um, she actually died earlier than, or, than has been assumed for years. Because, you know, they set some sort of a date based on eyewitnesses. But then a few years ago, they actually found new eyewitnesses or rather they managed to get a little more uh, elaborated description about the stages of her disease. So just from the description, it was very clear that she died earlier than assumed. But there was this one, uh, and, and the media reported about this study, um, not a lot, but there were a few reports. And one specific outlet that reported it actually made like a teeny tiny grammatical error with punctuation that sort of completely changed the meaning of everything. And rather than say like, she died earlier than people assumed, it made it sound like nobody knew what happened to her. Now, sadly, we know what happened to her. Um, but like th that thing was kind of like a spark for me. It was like, oh, that's really interesting. So let's say we didn't know what happened to her. How do we ground it in reality in the sense that all these years we didn't know anything about her? It meant that she had to keep it a secret. And then I was like, but, but why? What would be a reasoning for someone like her to keep something like this a secret? And what life choices she made once she got that second chance? So where would she be today? what kind of a person she ended up being, going through what she went through. So kind of like trying to answer all these questions was how the script was born. And the fact that again, it's just like that the study was published like really, really close to Passover, sort of created the perfect setting for it because we could usually put, because we, can, we could actually put the study in the film. Changed a few details about it, of course, for uh, storytelling purposes, but the timeline sort of aligned, which was miraculous. So that was, that was really great in that sense. Oh, wow, yeah, and you, you've kind of alluded to, you know, all the decisions that seem to be made in the film and they're just like every scene, you've got, you know, little decisions that keep sort of building. I thought that was kind of an interesting, um, an interesting piece where everybody's making all these little decisions and your main character, you know, Lizzie is just, just you can see she's visibly rattled. So. That big scene outside the lake, right, is really pivotal. How it's really <laughs> pivotal, <laughs> and I've had coffee today too. Um, <laughs> tell us, tell us about that scene outside uh, by the lake with Lizzie and her grandmother. How did that come about? And and I know that shaped a lot of what this film really, you know, the the big punch, that, you know, that came from her revealing that. How did you shape that into what it came to be? Well, I say first of all, I'm so happy that you're mentioning the lake because the the location that we found was incredible uh it's an airbnb this 
wonderful woman, maybe like 40 minutes upstate from, from New York City, which is where we're all based. Um, and I was so afraid that we didn't see enough of that amazing location, especially the outside, because we were by a creek, which was amazing. Um, so thank you for mentioning it. That makes me feel very happy. Um, and originally I'd say we didn't want to do it outside, of course, trying to make just our lives logistically as easy as possible. But I think uh, uh, Becca Roth, who directed and, <clears throat> and edited the movie, excuse me, um, we had a conversation about it, how it's just inside and we had to break it somehow, especially yeah. since, like you said, it is a pivotal moment. Um, so we decided to take it outside. I was like, well, what if we do fairy lights, something, because such, we put so much emphasis, even in the dialogue, on how much nature is important to her. And that is actually born from, from the diary. Um, you know, I highlighted the, the, the times that she mentions nature, the tree that she saw through the window. Um, so we really wanted her to, to be surrounded by it, but we also wanted it reflected, um, reflected in the movie visually. So I'm very happy that we decided to take it outside. Um, I'd say that's like maybe from the location aspect of it. From the emotional aspect, that too, we kind of like had to choose the right place in the dialogue to take it outside because originally it wasn't meant to happen. But after that reveal, which is like such high intensity, we almost wanted her to, wanted to take her out to a place that she might perceive as a sanctuary. Because apparently oh, yeah. it's like, if we're forgetting the feeling that she feels more calm uh, around nature. Uh, but not just that, this is the point that she's trying to make. This is the thing in her life that she's trying to maintain and keep others from like, kind of like, you know, she's saying like, I don't want people to come here. I don't want people to find me. This is, this is my peace that I've earned because of everything that I've been through. Um, so it was nice to actually put her there to really drive that point ho home by yeah. showing her really in a place where she feels comfortable enough. Um, this is also why I think she sent Lizzie back in and decided, granted she also wanted to talk to her sister, but you know, she needed that like really one, like I think she can almost think better out there. So it was really nice to kind of like put her there. Sure, I do like the twist at the end where she pulls out a phone and in the beginning, you know, there's, you know, why don't you have a phone? You know, I, ne I can never get a hold of you. So I, I like the twist at the end too that, you know, that kind of said grandma's got a few more secrets that you might not yeah. know about yet, so. yeah. Yeah, that was that was that was good, and I and I did I enjoyed the nature connection there, and you could see it throughout the film, and you could see the intention about placing you know placing that through through the entire piece. So congratulations on that. It's always one of my favorites, mm -hmm. uh, a tie-in with nature. Um, let's see. So I know making a film always has challenges. What challenges did you encounter on this one? Well, it took five years to make it, <laughs> so I'll start there. I mean, finances as always, you know, and I'm. Uh, I'm a first time filmmaker and, you know, uh, we had Tova, which was amazing. And we had a lot of people along the way who said, we believe in it, it will happen. Just not with our help, which of course is understandable. <laughs> I'm sure my friend is like, I have no doubt you'll manage to do it. I'm like, but how do you think that is going to happen? Um, it's very hard. I mean, I obviously am someone who uh, selfishly is very supportive of financing the arts. And as you mentioned, I, I was a film and TV major in high school. And I can tell you that a year after I finished the program, they really altered it. Entered, uh, they put way more science in there. And uh, the thing they eliminated was actually history of the art, which I studied extensively for three years through high school. And I thought really tells you so much about like how to build a frame and just like the history of, of visuals, you know? So, um, so yeah, so I am all for financing the arts, but I also understand, unfortunately, it's still perceived as something impractical. We see it now in New York so much because of the corona and how like, you know, all of our, yeah. all of our actors, all of our Broadway actors, they keep saying like, people think that being an artist is not an important job or like people think that an artist at a time like this does not need financial support the guys on broadway they by the time they reopened broadway they wouldn't have worked for like more than a year um i don't understand how people don't think art is important <laughs> but you know this is unfortunately what we have to deal with not just myself i i'd say that talking to people finances is always the hardest part 
um, getting people to believe in your in your product is also hard um, but it there's there's always going to be someone if you love it it means that there will be someone out there that loves it too what other compromises you have to make in order for you guys to work together that is also the question how much are you willing to give up um, i think i learned a lot about i have to make a lot of compromises but here are the things that i shouldn't have compromised on and now i know that in retrospect so you know the finances were, were a big thing the schedule was a big thing uh we really wanted to shoot in spring we wanted it to look like around passover rain is always like a you know uh unknown entity uh we're lucky we didn't really get rain it was kind of chilly but we squeezed the whole thing into two days which was kind of miraculous um and of course you know every now and then there's like oh this is a really old house so just so you know when you flush the one toilet that we have for the entire crew and cast just know that it takes about 10 minutes for the for the pump to stop making that noise so every time someone goes to the back you know we punched a hole in the wall that we had to kind of like seal um so those are the usual you know your go-to uh shenanigans on set shenanigans but um yeah i mean i'm really hoping that this is something that I can learn from in terms of how to get finances for the next thing in, in a way that's a little bit easier. This we couldn't have done without crowdfunding. So everything about this really is a team effort. My family, uh, family of other crew members, my friends that for years and years, every birthday, I'm like, don't buy me a present, just like put a little bit more money to that thing, you know? Um, <laughs> so I, feel, I keep saying like, I feel like that for this movie, I used every possible favor. I asked every possible, so gotta shift something for the next one, you know? It's hard, it's, I, I, really, I, I really do like, especially being at the circuit, admire all the filmmakers because I really don't know how people go back to the next one. It's, I feel like the, the first one is easier just because you can kind of like direct all of your energy and kind of like means to it. How do you come back from that? I don't know. I will get back to you in like a year or two once I figure out. <laughs> I, I know you'll get there after after getting a film into a festival and more than one festival you'll get there i hope so um, thank you <laughs> uh speaking of kind of challenges and unexpected how about anything unexpected that it that emerged that changed the direction of your film right because you go in with a vision of it yeah. and then suddenly you've got a team and things start to change what what happened in that arena it's both um it's both genuinely exciting because people are excited about the thing you wrote so they're trying to bring their own thing you need to kind of rewire your brain and i think a lot of writers encounter that you know i i take so personally every time i need to cut something i think i've gotten a lot better like now that i'm writing something new i'm like oh i i'm i'm less attached which is very very good um so i think there's a there's an exercise there in, in giving control and i think there's um there's also learning what's like where where's the right time to trust your instincts over someone else's instincts um because it's it is your story at the end of the day and um and there's a reason why you did what you did but you also need to learn if if, if you're relatively new learn from the people around you so i can tell you that about a couple years maybe three years actually before we shot the film we've done a live reading at the jcc in manhattan um with tova as well she read the lead role and Monica White, who played my mother both in the movie and uh, in the live reading. And we had a rehearsal, like a teeny tiny workshop right before the reading itself. And even then changes were made. And all of a sudden it comes to life because of the people who were involved in it. So some stuff are just so organic from the dynamic. But then I was like, okay, time to shoot this. Now three, three years later, obviously nothing has changed because we already made edits in that workshop. Obviously, that's very, very naive, <laughs> borderline stupid. Um, so we got to do a couple of rehearsals like before the, the shoot and, um, and stuff kept on changing. And at some point I was just like, okay, things will keep on changing. This is where I have to really like understand this is the nature of it, including on the day on set as an, and someone who's an actress, I have seen it from the other side. So I don't know why I expect anything different, but you know, you don't think about 
got it, but you know, um, yeah, but, but so, so it's exactly as you said, some of the stuff were born out of the location, like that taking the thing outside that we mentioned earlier. Yeah. Some of the stuff was born out of like, um, when we auditioned, we've done some improv and some things were really fun. Becca wanted to put in that Seder, Seder scene, some stuff that are from her family. I wanted to put some jokes that are from my family. There's also like a cultural discussion because yes, I'm Jewish, but I'm Israeli. And it's like, you know, the, the, is, the Israeli Seder looks very different from the Jewish American Seder. So there are a lot of discussions like, you guys don't do that? Okay, so I guess we have to take it out because American audiences would not understand what that is, you know? Uh, but I also wanted it, I knew that so much of my friends back home will watch it and I wanted them to also feel that like connection. Um, so I feel like to, to answer your question in a very, <laughs> very long way, um, I feel like almost every technical aspect um, affected it in a way that's, uh, sometimes good sometimes bad sometimes you just don't have a choice and then you find the solution in post which is its own interesting challenge and then the music the work with our with our composer uh was wonderful especially that like we, we i think our favorite was that seder scene with the klezmer music so yeah yeah that was i that hope was... somewhere in there i answered the question no no you you did i mean this is you know, kind of why why I really enjoy the Q and A section is you you know you get that really great insight into you know your experiences and how you've grown through this film and and that was a great comment and and I hear it a lot from filmmakers is man I got that first one in the can now what <laughs> yeah <laughs> what's yeah. next how do I yeah. you know how do I how do I grab that bar and pull myself up so I um, don't I don't think it's ever a lack of ideas I think it's yeah everything yeah. else. <laughs> <laughs> um, Speaking of cast, right, we were just talking about your cast and how did you pull everybody together? How did you, how did you find all your cast members? So Tova is Tova. That's pretty much all I have to say about that. Um, I knew, yeah, no, no, no. I knew, I knew I was writing for myself. Uh, as, as you know, I don't know if to say that it's the privilege of being a writer or actor, um, but writing is something that depends only on me i can write no one can stop me from writing except for my brain which i've been saying a lot recently but yes um but acting you really depend on others because you depend on having an agent and you depend on casting directors calling you in and then choosing you when you write for yourself you know this is why so many actors i think branch out to other disciplines which i think is incredible um so i knew i wanted to be in it and i knew i wanted you know, I wrote that granddaughter um, role with myself in mind. <laughs> and um, and then Tova was the next uh, piece of the puzzle. The first person, I, I really wanted someone as strong as her for that role because she's playing someone so famous and someone who's legendary. Um, so you need someone legendary to do that. And so that kind of like established, obviously, the looks for the entire family because you have those like, you know, skip generation in the middle that has to kind of fit both the grandma and the daughter um so yeah so we did do a couple rounds of auditions uh monica and i worked together on a show on a hulu show called the path that's how we met um she auditioned but she's amazing so you know it worked out and um and then we did do improv with everyone it was very funny because while me tova I believe Scott, who played my father, I think the three of us are Jewish, and then Alexander, who played my brother, is not, and Monica is not. But you know, when you live in New York long enough, and like when you're sur when you're surrounded by your cast members, it was very fun to do Passover-oriented improv at the audition room, which we did. And some of them don't know what they're talking about, but they're having such a blast that the family dynamic works so well. Um, so that how that's how the family came to be. My, uh, our anchor is one of my best friends, Huso Simone. She is a, an amazing Broadway actress. And uh, yeah, actually I did, you know, and that's maybe if we're getting a little heavier and deeper, I did know that I wanted a person of color in that role. And we had the whole discussion of whether or not, it's, it's a small role in a movie that's already small. Are we, by doing this, kind of like playing into the narrative of tokenism, or are we saying, by default because of the nature of of this family everyone is from eastern european descent so the one role that doesn't have to be that way would be great to give to someone who's a person of color 
um, you know, and I talk to Husa about it to make sure she's comfortable with all of it and how, she, you know, how we would approach it. It is a small role, but it's a role of a career woman. Um, you know, so obviously we also had the discussions because the majority of our crew were women, which is something that was very intentional. To tell you that I think, I think we can always do better. You know, I, I look at our crew, I think we can definitely always do better, but I'm like, we have a movie that is going to be 14 minutes long that we're shooting at the course of two days and that has six cast members with the anchor. Uh, if this is something that we can do, even if it's really small, I'd rather like maybe risk criticism and have this discussion of, you know, how much we tried and why we tried and then to not try at all. So, and I'm very happy that she said yes and she did a really good job, even though that it's in a tiny, tiny, tiny TV, but still. Yeah, TV, yeah, TV on a screen, a screen on a screen. Yeah, um, and it I, was a great day because we actually shot at a new studio downtown in the financial district in Manhattan. So I think everyone just had fun going into a, a legitimate studio. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I can imagine. But uh, you, you can tell the, the everybody really gelled really well and, and the cast, I mean, it feels like a family. You know, the minute they walk in, you know it's family just by the way everybody got out of the Subaru. It was just like, oh yeah, this is family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so that that was that was really well done. I, I like those little things when you see them in films, and they they give you the cues that help you you know get the emotion that you're trying to you know help people find in your in your picture. So those little cues mean a big deal. Um, Thank you. Let's see. Uh, what else? Oh, here we go. This one's this one's good. I, this is one of my favorites. What about the Book of Ruth? Are you the most proud of? Ah that it exists <laughs> because as we established that was quite the journey um yeah i mean it, it is interesting because i feel like um those two days were a blur for me it's something that i was waiting for so long to do and when you wear so many hats uh, sometimes it's actually really hard to be in the moment you know and, and that's the um that's the downside of of which is so much in you see it so much in independent filmmaking that everyone is doing everything uh, it was always my fear to not to give like 70% to three things rather than 100% to one thing. So every almost everything that I'm really proud of is coming in retrospect. Because now when we're more than a year after, a year and a half even, I'm like, wow, we really did do that. <laughs> that thing really happened. What were we thinking? In what world did we think this can happen in two days? Um, so I am, I, I am really proud. I think it took some time because you spent, you know, something is in post for so long. It's not out there in the world. And then you start with the festival circuit. And that's something actors always say that every time they get a job, they're afraid it's going to be the last or they just assume it's the last. I remember we got into our first festival. And I was like, is this going to be the only one? It started with, are we even going to get into any festival? And then is this going to be the only one? to really get to a point now that I'm saying, you know what, if, if, if we're done, then I'm happy. I, that I feel like we had, I'm proud of the festival run that we had. I'm, I'm proud of the festivals we've gone into. Um, and it's also in terms of validation. I know ideally we're not supposed to look for validation in other places and with other people, but we're all human and we want it. Yeah, and you make absolutely. a movie, right. You make a movie, you hope it's good, you like it, but you're obviously biased because it's your baby. So <laughs> you're like, will someone else like it too? So, so, you know, the last few months screening, talking to people, I enjoy the Q&A so much and people challenge you with questions that you haven't thought about before. And it makes me, makes you kind of like look at your own thing in a new light or hear something that other people got out of it that you didn't even think about. So I'd say that the aftermath is almost more enjoyable or like kind of like the final piece of the puzzle to the whole thing. And I am very proud of our, of like, you know, this team coming together, doing it the way we did. And, and the, yeah, absolutely the festival experience, which ideally would have been physical, but you know, we're making do. Yeah. Very, very true. Well, you know, um, you're a super talented filmmaker, so I expect you to be back in Tallgrass here before too long. I hope so. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
Um, speaking of, you know, super talented filmmaker, what's next on your list? I'm always torn between like talking about some like jinxing it and you know, um, I, I'm currently writing a feature. It's completely, you know, it does have Jewish touches, which I keep saying is really funny. I'm culturally Jewish, but I'm an atheist. So I don't know why this keeps on happening. <laughs> Maybe it's like a homesickness subconscious, like subconsciously, I don't know. Um, yeah, but it's, it's a feature, it's a comedy. Uh, I'd say that miraculously, once I started writing it, it really came together very, very quickly in like uh, a few weeks, but it's because I spent like seven months researching because it's a genre that I'm not uh, very familiar with. So I think that research really helped. I don't want to say too much. I'm hoping, you know, maybe once again, get someone uh, I have in mind, but you know, someone specific and known for that lead role and see if that can take it somewhere. Um, and it's also, <laughs> we talked about validation. I love comedy for the majority of my life. I wrote comedy and not drama. Uh, so the Book of Ruth was a bit of a detour, unintentional detour in a way. But now that I am back writing comedy after so long, I'm like, am I still funny? Is this actually funny or is it just funny in my head? So, you know, it's going to have its own tests and challenges. Um, but we'll see. So I'm hoping to finish a first draft uh, before the end of the year and then start seeing what, what can be done with it. Excellent. Well, I know everybody watching is going to be, you know, looking forward to seeing what comes next. Um, we really do appreciate um, the work that you've done. Uh, this is just, just a really fun and thought provoking film that, you know, made me laugh too. There were some, you could tell when you said you were a comedy writer, you know, the rest of me went, oh yeah, that, that shows <laughs> a little bit with the drama, but there's a little poking of fun at everybody. So great, great film. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us today and uh, keep watching uh, for more incredible films at the film festival. And uh, we will see you in the future, I'm sure. Hope so. Thank you.